and welcome to Game Sack. Now, we had a sports game episode before, but this time we're going to talk about some unconventional sports. What the hell is an unconventional sport? <laughs> I don't know, but who wants to play real sports? I mean, really. Besides just a few games out there, all of them are pretty darn boring, I think. I asked you a question. And I said I don't know, but unconventional sports, hmm. Well, let's take a look at some of these games and we'll find out, I guess. Sounds good to me. Arch rivals on the Genesis by Flying Edge tried to take basketball to a new level. In this two-on-two -two game, you play as a single person and you can't cycle between the other characters. In order to steal the ball, you can punch the guy who has it and take it while he's down on his ass. You can even pull down their shorts if you're good. Eventually, litter will start piling up on the court and you can slip on it, so be careful. It's fast-paced and fun for a short while, especially with a friend. A four-player option is sorely missing, though. Oh, I'm so sore. Overall, it's a fairly good conversion of the arcade game, but the music, oh man, does it get annoying fast. But seriously, who doesn't like a little violence with their basketball? I'm open! Over here! NBA Jam was a much better two-on-two -two basketball game, also created in the arcades by Midway. This right here, though, is the Genesis version. You choose players from real NBA teams, which might make it seem a little bit more of a conventional sports games rather than the stuff we're talking about in this episode. But then you start playing. You've got flaming basketballs, hoops that catch on fire, and lots of other mayhem. This game is really cool, and I like it more and more each time I play it. The voices are pretty clear as well. Head fake. Around the rebound. It also features four player capability. Honestly, I can't see anyone not liking this game. There's also NBA Jam Tournament Edition shown here on the 32X. In addition to looking much better, this one adds stuff like updated players. Unfortunately, the music is still the same and it still doesn't sound very exciting. NBA Jam was ported pretty much everywhere except for the places it wasn't. So if you own a 16 or 32-bit era console, chances are you can get this game and I highly recommend it. Count it! From pound to pound! The rebound! This is Caveman Games for the NES. It's funny because everyone thinks that the Olympics started in Greece, but this game is proof that cavemen held their own Olympic-style games way before then. There's six events here that real cavemen probably competed in to show their prowess. Probably the best feature of this game is that you can have six players compete against each other, and this is done by alternating control pads. But for this review, I'm playing alone, and since there's only six events, let's take a quick look at each one. Up first is clubbing. This is a normal club battle game. To start off, you mash buttons to intimidate your opponents. After that, you can club them really slowly with the A button. It's really boring, and all you have to do to win is keep pushing your opponent back until he falls off the edge. Next is Mate Toss, probably the most enjoyable event in the game. This plays similar to a hammer throw, but you get to throw your woman instead of a hammer. I mean, it's not like she doesn't deserve it, right, Sarkeesian? Dino Vault is next. It's obviously pole vaulting, but over a hungry dinosaur's head. You can lengthen the neck of the dino for height. It's really tough to know when you must release for the vault. I was hoping for my player to get eaten because I really wanted my caveman to die by this point. This event is Dino Race. It's a button masher mainly with a jump button. Good luck though, as I couldn't get my stupid dinosaur to jump over rocks. You can get a speed burst, and this seems like the only time your dino will make good jumps. Other than that, forget it. It's impossible and just not entertaining. And here's Fire Start. You must mash the A button which rubs two sticks together. Once sparks fall on the wood below, you must blow on it until it blazes away. This event is so easy. The only challenge you'll have is not getting up and walking away in boredom. And not a moment too soon, we have the last event which is Saber Race. This one is actually responsive and you have a chance to win. Button mash to run and jump over obstacles in your path all while being chased by a tiger. I'm not sure who won this race since we both survived. <laughs> what a letdown. Well, the game's over and I finished all events in under 13 minutes. It's a very short game with many control problems and over half the events are very boring to play. I'd steer clear of this one if I were you and I'm glad I'm not. There are much better Olympic style games out there. Here's American Gladiators on the Genesis. This is based on a TV show that I loved in the 90s, and it came back briefly in 2008. I loved the hell out of the show, and I remember thinking how fun it would be to do all those cool-looking events in real life. Unfortunately, the experience with the video game doesn't quite live up. Not even close. 
You can choose Tournament, which lets you go through all of the events, or Head to Head, which lets you do the same thing with a friend. You just go through one event after the other, and I hope you have the instruction manual because the game doesn't tell you what the controls are beforehand. But you'll eventually figure everything out if you don't get piss bored first. This is one of those games that does not like the six button controller, so be careful. I really would have liked the ability to practice each event individually, but it just doesn't offer that. The graphics are pretty weak, and the one musical tune that the game has plays continuously over everything. This could have been so much better, but come on, nothing can compare to the dream of actually being on the show. Super Baseball 2020 for the Neo Geo CD shows us how baseball is going to be in the future. Five years in the future to be exact. It turns out by the year 2020 we'll be playing baseball on metallic fields. And not only will women be allowed to play baseball in the majors, but robots as well. For the most part, Super Baseball 2020 plays as a standard arcade style baseball game. Choose your pitch by pressing the joystick up or down to select between slow or fast ball and press left or right to curve the ball. You can move the batter around, swing, or bunt. Fielding simply could not be any easier, and throwing the ball to a base is accomplished by pressing the joystick in the same direction as the bases on the diamond. Up for second base, down for home, right for first, and left for third. Honestly, this is the only way that video game baseball fielding should be. The gameplay is very fast paced, and you won't get bored like you do when you watch real baseball. Yeah, that's right, I said it. What you gonna do? The music is nice, and it should be nice since it's streaming from the CD, but it's not really anything that you're gonna wanna rip and listen to later. This is a great baseball game, and you can get inferior versions of it on the inferior Super Nintendo and the inferior Sega Genesis. Nah, I'm sure it's fun on those systems too. Here's Super Dodgeball on the NES. Firstly, I've got to say that playing dodgeball in grade school all through high school was the highlight of gym class for me. In high school, I absolutely loved trying to smash Joe's face in with a ball. What the hell did I do? Given my love for this unconventional sport, I was pretty happy to be able to play Super Dodgeball on the NES. It was developed by Technos as part of the Kunio Kun series. Playing a single player game, you take the role of Team USA and play against teams from many nations around the world. When you start playing, you're going to want to complain about the constant sprite flicker and even half of a sprite's body disappearing. But you've got to remember that there's 12 character sprites that the NES is trying to handle and it's doing its best to keep up. After a while, you accept it since you're having a kick-ass time. Learning the controls is quick and easy. There's many different types of throws you can do and each one of the three characters on the main field have their own type of special throw. These are powerful and deal a nice amount of damage. You can even intercept passes from the opposing team and teach them a painful lesson. Each team you play against, you travel to their country, which is cool. There's many different backgrounds, and each has its own music, which overall is very enjoyable. Each team has even stereotypical names, which some might find offensive these days. Man, I miss the 80s. There's a couple of different two-player modes here. Straight up dodgeball, which is really fun, and a game called beanball. This one isn't very entertaining, and it's really hard to keep track of your player, and even harder to get your hands on the ball. I really like this game, and have had a lot of fun with it over the years. Definitely give this one a look. You might enjoy it. Jerry Glanville's pigskin foot brawl on the Genesis is basically the football version of Arch Rivals, except that this one takes place in medieval times. The ball is thrown before the actual gameplay starts. There really are no plays to choose from, no downs, no penalties. You simply just need to get the ball and make it to the goal in order to score a touchdown. You can punch the other players in an attempt to get them to drop the ball. There's also a bunch of crap all over the field that you'll probably run into and that makes you drop the ball as well. Like Arch Rivals and NBA Jam, you control only one player on the entire team and you can't switch between them. But you do have an attitude button so you can switch your team's priority depending on if you're on offense or defense and that can change at any second. This is based on the arcade game simply called Pigskin 621 AD by Midway. It's actually a fairly decent conversion, all things considered. I guess Razorsoft felt that coach and former NASCAR driver Jerry friggin Glanville would be a natural fit for this game. He has absolutely nothing to do with it other than his face on the title screen. Those days were really interesting because you just simply could not have a sports game without a celebrity endorsement of some kind. 
Anyway, what's weird about the Genesis version is that the music volume is pretty inconsistent. Usually it's extremely quiet, but sometimes it's a bit louder. Overall, it's a decent game to play, but it gets old after about eh, five or 10 minutes. Let's go! Speedball 2 on the Genesis is a game that I've never really been able to get into. Basically, it's a future game of RoboBall or some such nonsense. Your goal is to score... goals. But there's more to it than that. For example, there are warp tunnels on the sides of the arena which will warp the ball to the other side similar to the tunnels in Pac-Man. You can hit things on the sidewall or the floor for some bonus points or multipliers. There's also some coins scattered around which will be helpful in upgrading your players. So it all sounds pretty interesting, but damn is it boring to play. For one, there's barely any sound at all and it makes it feel very uneventful. The voice samples that do play are actually of decent quality though. Replay! And the graphics are really plain. I mean, come on, I've seen Game Boy games with more color than this. There's a lot of people that actually do seem to like this game, but I'm sorry, I'm not one of them. Hmm, all right, so that's what an unconventional sport is, huh? Yep. I like it. Yeah, I like them better than real sports, too. Yeah, there's a lot more imagination going on with these things, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hell, let's just get back to even more of them, what do you say? Mm-hmm. This is Sega Soccer Slam on the GameCube by Stupid Sega. This is a fast-paced game with teams of four players. I really like this game because it never slows down. There's no out-of-bounds, so the action doesn't stop. There are six teams that you can choose from right off the bat with some that can be unlocked later. These teams have different attributes like fire or water. These don't make a huge difference in how the game plays, but it shows when you're doing a killer kick as the game calls it. There's many different types of modes here from playing an exhibition or a tournament to a quest mode. Quest mode is fun and it's a way for you to earn money to power up your team. But if you don't want to mess around with any of that stuff, just play a quick exhibition game. It's easy to get into and the controls are simple. There's no penalties here so you can slide tackle all day long and trust me, you will be slide tackling because that's the best way to get the ball back into your possession. For a soccer game, you can score a lot. I think if this was how real soccer was, then it would be a lot more popular here in the USA. But even though you score a lot, it's not always easy to score. The computer's AI is pretty good and will stop a lot of shots. As mentioned before, you can do killer kicks and this helps add flair to the game. You have a power meter that builds up and when it's full you push the RNA buttons at the same time and you can set up a very powerful shot. This is great, but it is stoppable. You can also power up your player with the same meter. If you push the L button, your player controlling the ball becomes super powerful. He or she becomes stronger, faster, and a better shooter. There's not a lot to dislike about this game. I like that you can control the angle and distance of the camera. This should be a mandatory feature in all sports games. If I had one complaint, it's the characters. They're all ugly to look at and they all have a toot about them that's more annoying than anything. This is a very enjoyable game which is also available on the PS2 and Xbox and I recommend you find yourself a copy because you'll enjoy it. Now it's Diablo. Let's check out Ballistics for the amazing TurboGrafx-16 from Psygnosis. It was also released on a flurry of European computers as well as DOS. In this one, your goal is simply to blast a black ball into your opponent's goal. That's worth one point. The first one to score three points wins the match and then you change venues to try to do it again. Your dude or whatever the hell it is always auto-aims himself at the black ball and you just move him up and down and all around. To move the black ball, you shoot your own balls at it. You have a limited supply of balls, but you can grab them as they bounce around and shoot them again, so it's not really an issue. In some arenas, there's objects that can affect your movement as well as the way the balls bounce around. Sometimes there's items to collect that will either help you or hinder you, like putting even more balls on the screen. Before each match, some weirdo comes down and says, Let the game commence. W w what did he say? Ooh, a big game. Commence. Let the game commence. Well, I guess we'll leave that one to the future historians to figure out. The graphics are minimal, but pleasant, and the music is all right. You can play without an opponent, and all you have to do is score three times, which is pretty damn easy. It's really tough to lose, but trust me, I found a way. 
Overall, I don't think that this game is as bad as others on the internet make it out to be, but there's really nothing tremendously special about it either. Just like me. Mario Superstar Baseball for the GameCube is one of those spin-off games that turned out pretty well. Besides the normal game modes of Exhibition and Challenge which are anything but normal, this game is loaded with other modes and minigames that make it a fairly deep experience. Playing an Exhibition game, you can do all the stuff that you can do in a regular game like choose your pitcher and batting order and whatnot. Then you pick the field you want to play on. Mario Stadium is a straight up ballpark. All the other ones have something going on that can help or hinder you. Like the Donkey Kong level where barrels roll across the outfield. If the outfielder gets hit by a barrel, they'll drop the ball giving the batter more time to run bases. Or on Yoshi Park where the outfield has piranha plants that'll eat the outfielder or the ball and spit it out in a random direction. These fields definitely give the batting team the advantage, but there's still fun fields to play on. Then there's the mini games. These are hit or miss with some games that are entertaining like Toy Field where the field is littered with icons. Wherever the ball lands after being hit, that determines what happens next. Or bob -omb Derby. This is a fun home run derby game that has fireworks. I love fireworks! Others are more or less just boring like Piranha Panic and Barrel Batter. This game controls well overall, but I feel I must complain a bit about fielding. Once you catch a ball and try to throw it to a base, it seems like it takes a second longer than it should. It just feels slow. That's it. That's my only real complaint about this game. Otherwise, it's a very solid experience and a fun game to play. You can't have an unconventional sports game episode and not talk about Mutant League Football on Genesis. You're playing as a team of monsters and it's so violent that Senators would be super pissed off if they ever saw this game. Which means it's really not that bad. This is a fantastic game. On the surface it plays like an average football game with a standard selection of plays and similar rules as the real game. But everything is faster and more chaotic and that's a good thing. Monsters are often ripped apart on a play. During any normal game, 10 different players might be killed. Dead forever. Their dreams gone. Dead. Still, overall it plays like you'd expect from the company that brought you the Madden series with that style of play selection, passing windows, and whatnot. If you're not sure what kind of play to pick, you can always listen to the advice from your coach. Great call. Thanks, coach. There's lots of fun to be had here, and I like that you can pick between different looking fields. They're all top down instead of the three quarter view of the Madden series, but that's okay. Otherwise, everything here looks totally metal, even though the frame rate is kind of choppy. Oh well. You can even bribe or kill the referee or be taken down by obstacles on the field. I mean, come on, what's not to like? The music is grungy, sounds like ass, and <laughs> it's totally perfect for the game. This was followed up with Mutant League Hockey, also on the Genesis. This one's cool too, but I don't think it came out quite as well. It's based on the NHL games that they were making at the time, and gameplay-wise, it's not horrible. The low frame rate does keep it from being as enjoyable as it could be, though. Once again, it's just like hockey, only violent. Nothing at all like regular hockey, which is always about peace, love, and friendliness. Yeah, I know these jokes suck, but come on, bear with me. Bodies explode on the ice and you might fall over them if you're not careful. You can even get into fights and this is pretty cool. The loser of the fight goes to the penalty box because losing is not allowed. Overall, it's kind of a lackluster follow-up, but I would have still loved to see more Mutant League sports games as they make things more interesting for people like me. Probably my favorite unconventional sports game is Punch-Out! I started really liking this game on the NES. It was fast paced and really fun to play. But since I've talked about it previously, let's move on to Super Punch-Out! This is a proper sequel to the NES version which did almost everything right. It had bigger character sprites and lots of new opponents to trade punches with. It also retained all that was great about the first game with tight controls and you still had a super punch system with a meter instead of stars. Another great thing about Super Punch-Out is... Uh, Dave, you already covered Super Punch-Out back in 2011, you dumbass. Wait, what? I did? Hmm. Oh well. Not all's lost because I haven't talked about Punch-Out on the Wii yet. 
I was beyond happy when I learned that Nintendo was bringing Punch-Out to the Wii. I was even more happy that the game didn't include waggle controls. You could use the Wii balance board if you wanted to, but why would I want to do that? I don't think I'd call this a brand new game in the series, but when you play it, it feels new. The reason I wouldn't call it brand new is that you fight a lot of opponents from the first two games. All of them have the same moves that they did before, but they also have some new ones to keep it fresh. Not only that, but there's new intros for all the characters and lots of new animations. I like how the fighters show damage as the fight progresses. I also like when you're beating the crap out of an opponent, they have things floating around their head. Like Piston Hondo has sushi, or Bear Hugger has salmon. I really like these racist touches. We're all too damn sensitive as it is. Another thing that I really like is Little Mac. He has the coolest facial expressions that really make you want to relate to his struggle to win. The graphics are great. Little Mac and his opponents couldn't look any better. Well, they actually could, but this is great. The backgrounds are cool and you get glimpses of crowds around the ring when flash bulbs or lighting goes off. Doc Lewis is here and he's still poking fun at the original game, but sadly Club Nintendo is gone now just like the Nintendo Fun Club. Oh, <laughs> my free stuff that I spent lots and lots of money to get. The music is fantastic with remix tunes and also some new music. Three, four, five. This is just one amazing game and Nintendo really surprised me at the time with this release. The game isn't expensive, so don't be a fool, buy it now! Even I have it, I'm not a fool. And there you go, unconventional sports games. What games that are unconventional and have to do with sports do you guys like? Let us know. I'm sure there's a lot more of them out there, so please, because we had a good time with these ones, and let us know if there's anything that we really should be trying out. And do you want to see EA make a Mutant League basketball like I do, or maybe a Mutant League IndyCar 500, or, you know, something stupid like that? Yeah, that'd be awesome. So, yeah, anyway, let us know, and in the meantime, thank you for watching GameSat. Dave. Go on, buddy. Okay. This is an unconventional football. Touchdown.